Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we begin by unlocking large volume containment. I really want to build bigger rockets, well wider rockets anyway, and uh, so this will help us design a new class of rockets. We've spent a lot of time with our colonization base, our normal core that you've seen so many times, and maybe maybe something new would be really helpful right now. So we'll try that out. We've got plenty of elder technologies to unlock, but in order to get to these really high-tech stuff, we are going to need to uh, upgrade the R&D center. We currently have enough funds, but uh, funds are sort of tight. Remember, our launches cost quite a lot. Right now, our main priority is dealing with... Oops, I can't really see the life support situation like this, but... Uh, dealing with the Minmus base, we need more supplies, but we're not going to send just more supplies. What we're going to do is we're going to send some fertilizer. We're going to send some, um, what you got, uh, machinery. Machinery is what the greenhouse modules need in order to run so that they can uh, do their greenhouse thing. So we're going to try and get the greenhouses running on Minmus and then get them running on the moon. The problem with the moon was that we didn't have scientists there to run the greenhouses. We might have to hire some new peoples as well. Um, I don't know if it'd be better to have a biologist uh, for the greenhouse. They're, they're cheap, that's the good thing. Um, but of course they're gonna cost more life support as well, so we have to make sure that everything is balanced. Anyway, let me build some stuff and I'll come back to you with the result. All right, so here is our new rocket with our payload bound for Minmus. Let's talk about the payload first. This is a tiny, I call it the Salalander because the pod name is Salamander. And of course I just uh, changed the Mander to Lander because it's gonna land. And the idea behind this is, uh, well, it's actually got a core module of supplies. So don't be fooled, there's a little container there with supplies. But the outer containers, as I understand it, these containers can be changed from one cargo to another. So it could be really helpful. Um, we've got two containers of fertilizer and two containers of machinery on here. And so that's what we'll deliver in order to make the greenhouses work on Minmus. It's got solar panels there. The little bubbles with extra liquid fuel and oxidizer tucked in in slightly clippy ways. Uh, forgive me. Uh, and then there's a liquid fuel and oxidizer tank here, and then the LV-909 as the main engine. Total delta V is 826 meters per second, mainly because uh, not only did I want it to be able to capture and orbit around Minmus and land, but potentially I also want it to be able to land on the moon, though it might need a little bit more help on that or carry less cargo. Um, it can carry two in the satellite lander pod. The problem is that habitation is only seven days. Uh, which, I mean, it's really annoying that all of the pods by default have a seven-day habitation, but it takes longer than that to get to Minmus. Um, and there's no good way to expand, I mean, of course you could put an extra pod on there, uh, but that's not the best way to sort of expand it. You know, we could have added this lander can, but that would make it a quite a tall lander too. Uh, so, yeah, I'm gonna have to look into that. Uh, one possibility is this uh, Omicron system. We haven't unlocked the parts yet, but we could. Uh, we just need a little bit more science to unlock the uh, parts for the Omicron system. And the Omicron system is a cute little thing, and we'll have to see what kind of habitation it has. Right now we only have the seats. We need the actual cockpit. I don't know how that works, but we'll find out. Anyway, let's talk about the, the launcher. Now, of course, I've gone with the skipper upper stage. You should be familiar with this sort of situation. The skipper is the ultimate upper stage, basically, and we will continue to use it as necessary. The lower stage is four mainsail engines. Uh, these skirts are half fueled uh, to compensate for the fact that there's clippiness, and you notice the lander legs. So we are going to, this is basically a Falcon 4 style thing. I mean, it's pretty darn heavy as it is. Um, and the lander legs go like that. And it looks pretty stable. It's got two uh, sets of burners, of course, the air brakes, but no parachutes this time. So for stage recovery, we'll uh, have its reserve fuel. So it's going to have to uh, reserve fuel for landing. I'll have to figure out how much we need to reserve for that. 
Uh, I'm planning to reserve at least a thousand meters per second on this launch because we don't really need, need that much and if we try to use all of it from the first stage it's gonna get pretty far out and probably wouldn't be recoverable and burn up. So we just uh, reserve it and have it come back down and that should be fine. Um, I'm not going to manually land it this time because we've got a crewed vessel. Maybe uh, later on we'll find a way to make sure that we can get the payload into orbit quickly and then get a chance to land the first stage and test it out. But for now this will do. It's in, the intention is to land it back at the launch site so it's reserving a thousand meters per second. Now when we reserve a thousand meters per second here that's with it having the upper stage in the payload. Uh, 1000 meters per second reserved leads to way more delta V and probably we don't need to save that much to help it land. I've also made sure to put the fuel priority so that the lower tanks are lower priority so hopefully that means that the fuel will remain down here and it'll be oriented properly for landing. Okay so that's the idea Let's see uh, if we have any problems with that. We'll only send one Kerbal this time, and I want to send a scientist. Um, no, I have to send a pilot, huh? You know what? Maybe a remote controller on the Salander would be a good idea. We've only got this refueling port. We've also got uh, little um, connector ports here. We only want to put one Kerbal into the Salander because otherwise um, they're going to be turn into tourists again. So that wouldn't be any good. This is a bit awkward. I uh, I could unlock uh, better probe cores, but let's just tuck this in for now. I decided that because it's so flat, I had to put it into a fairing rather than just have it stick out. Yeah, uh, it doesn't seem particularly aerodynamic, that's for sure. But the flatness is good for landers, because so, then the center of mass doesn't end up too high. I should still use the Alcor pod more though. We've got that. It's expensive though. I mean this Salander, well Salamander command pod is 2500. The Alcor pod is uh, is really advanced. It's it's you can see it's only 1.88 tons crew capacity of 3, but 9500. This one it's it's heavier, has one less crew capacity, but it's cheaper. Okay, anyway, let's go with this and pick our crew member. Um, let's send Bob. Bob hasn't gotten much experience being a scientist. Let's send Bob, and the controller will take care of the rest. Actually, you know what? I think I would rather have a biologist. It seems from the documentation uh, for the USI parts that biologists, it says, biologists are essential for operating basic agriculture and cultivation modules. They can also perform basic, uh, perform scientific research. I think it'd be better just to have a biologist. Uh, we seem to have uh, two males, one female, so I'll, I'll pick a female. Um, I really wish... Um, I don't want much stupidity, but that increases the price. But, hey, it's worth it. Um... They don't have to be particularly courageous, though. We'll we'll go. We'll aim for about five thousand cost here. Okay. Hire applicant. John Wise. John Wise doesn't sound like a girl's name, but okay. So we have our first specialist, uh, biologist. Haven't had one of those before. No. Otherwise, it's all pilot, engineer, and scientist. So our first specialist here will be heading off to Minmus. Okay, here we go with John Wise Kerman, SAS on, throttles up, and launch. Bit of a wiggle there. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a roll to it for some odd reason. Now we're going with a steep trajectory for recovery purposes and also because we don't have fins on. Gotta worry about all that. Don't want to flip on this. It'll probably break apart if we do. It's quite a rocket though. It's looking good. I think we can keep going for a little bit longer. We're not going that fast. Let's 
should stop it there. 765 meters per second. I wanted to get to uh, Abuasis of 100 kilometers. All right, separation and ignition. Let's see if uh, stage recovery can handle that. And fairing set. Hmm, I wonder if I should have put a comm device on here, owing to the fact that John Wise isn't a pilot, and we need the probe core. That could be a problem. Well, that'll be something new to learn. Okay, let's go to Apoapsis here. Alright, well this rocket is obviously overpowered for this particular purpose. 1,600 meters per second left. When really for getting to Minmus we only needed 1,000 on this stage. Because the lander itself can make orbit around Minmus as well as land. But okay, let me make a transfer. It looks like we'll hit Minmus over there. Hopefully that won't take too long. We've got habitability of 14 days. Okay, getting ready for the transmimus injection. It looks like it'll take us 10 days to get there, so that will be in time. And we have a message. It looks like the first stage was recovered. Terminal velocity of 4, and it was a propulsive landing as expected. Um, check SR flight GUI for, I don't know if, uh, here. Um, here it says percent refunded, 90% of course. Um, does it say how much? Uh, well, okay, here, info. Distance from KSC 158 kilometers. That's not very far. Well, okay, Kerbin is very small. Um, fuel consumed uh, 719 units of liquid fuel and 878 units of oxidizer. So we'll keep that in mind. It looks pretty good though. No worries. And it's really expensive as you can see. So if we take a look at this message it says uh, total refunds 183,000 of 202,000. Well worth it. Alright. Okay, here we go. Alright, that's good enough. Okay, 52 kilometers there. And time there, 10 days. Okay, so panels are out. Let's hope we maintain control over this all the way out. We should have enough satellites at Minmus to um, deal with it though. Just need to make orbit. Come on, communications. Okay, well, here's the question. Does limited crew control include revving up the engine? Yes, it does. Well, I'll take it. I don't know why none of our satellites and such are helping. Not very convenient. That's pretty much ideal. Let's dump the skipper stage now. I mean, I guess we could try and land the skipper stage and harvest it for material kits, but that, that's like stage three. Um, we're still learning some of the basics here, frankly. Okay, separate. And ignition of this stage, gear down. Now we have communication. Oh, we can sort of see the stage going by there. Still in render range. We really want to situate this in between various things. so that we can hook up the the new habitat module with everything else and so it can get electric charge otherwise it's not going to get enough electric charge to run the greenhouses 
But that's alright, uh, this has plenty of fuel to make a precision landing. I know, with modules I need to put the wheels on. Something else I need to learn how to do. So that they can be moved a little bit easier. Well, this will have enough fuel to get back to orbit if we wanted to. I guess that's a fringe benefit. Well, that's a very close target difference right there. We are currently targeting Minmus Colony 1, which is a good thing to target. But we specifically need it to be this to be between Minmus Colony 1 and the carbonite mining electric generator. Hmm, sure seems like we'll be landing right on top of it at this rate. This is a pretty good location. You can see the carbonite miner there. Like I said, I want it between the two. Um, just wait a bit. Well, that's pretty much smack, smack dab in between the two, so can't complain. There we go. Should be able to get an engineer out to hook things up then. Alright. Hopefully nobody's turned into a tourist in the meantime. Okay, supplies are good. Wonder how John Wise has 148 days of supplies when Minmus Colony only has 76, but when we hook everything up, everybody should be evened out, maybe. Okay, um, let's keep John Wise in here for now. Let's see, where do we have an engineer? And does the engineer have what engineers need? Yes, a drill. Equip. Okay, where did the little attachment ports go? I know I put them on. Oh, oh, they're, they're sort of buried in there. Oh, there they are. Um, we need to grab it. Connector port. Yeah, uh, nope, nope. No, not the landing strut. That caused all sorts of horror. Okay, one connector port. And can we grab this connector port as well? It's not good for them to be in there anyway. And actually, this, if we could attach it to somewhere that isn't hidden. That's a good idea. All right, now, do watch out for the landing legs. Okay. Oh, well, no, you don't have to... Why, why does he have to pick the most chaotic... Oh, knocked off a... Uh, wh why? Why? Why do you have to do this? How did... How did you get... All crazy anyway? Come on, be careful. It's not like... Yeah, okay, maybe we should turn off your... EVA pack. Clearly not the best EVA person here right now. Don't suppose you could repair a solar panel, Malemony. Probably need material kits or something or some parts for that. Okay, looks like he'll pass under the solar panel here. Okay. Okay, no, this way. Be careful. Blink. Okay, that's one side done. Our 
Well, if you can't repair it, we can disassemble it for parts. Let's get close. Yeah, let's try disassemble. Ooh. 12 units of material kits were lost due to lack of... Why? Why, why? why did they have to be lost? We have all sorts of place for material kits around here. I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe he has to have like a material kit pack to save the material kits or something. I don't know. Okay, and... Link. And turn off your jetpack before you do something horrible. Link. Alright. Okay, let's get Melemony over in this habitat. And then we'll move our biologist into the habitat too. Okay, that's that. Okay, this is the base. But just camera wise, it's so so inconvenient because it wants to be focused on all of them. Is there any crew in here? Okay, Randall Kerman is in there. Let's try and start that out because that's our scientist in there. Missing machinery. Okay. Um, we have to specifically transfer the machinery from here into there. Well, let's do that. Okay, now 49% load it says. So we're doing agroponics. Agricultural module is working. And uh, power seems fine. Power seems fine. John Wise transfer to this module and start agroponics there. Missing machinery, of course. We should transfer the fertilizer as well. And we've got other scientists, though. We could let them actually do science. There's a science module on that part of the base, the planetary basing part. Okay, and why don't we transfer some fertilizer too. And while we're at it, uh, since these are active modules now, we'll turn the lights on. Good way to indicate that. Now, how is life support around here? Well, it doesn't really say properly. It says 56 days. And I'm pretty sure that means it's not taking into consideration what these two are going to supply. Now that it's all hooked up, we can uh, start the HAB quarters here. And that improves the habitat to five years for these guys. And that includes John Wise and everybody. Uh, electric charge, stable. So all is stable. Very good. Hmm. I just wish I had more certainty about the supply situation. Given that we've got greenhouses, we've got this module doing recycling, we've got another recycling module over here, um, I think. Yeah, that one is a habitat module, so it's got habitat going. Um, that's our... Uh, oh, let's log temperature. Wow, we haven't done that yet. Um, well, let's process in lab, maybe. 275 signs. Hmm. We could still transmit it, though. Wait, let me see what else we've got here. Was it just the thermometer? Seems like it. We're getting uh, 0.37 science per day. So we've got a scientist in here as well. Uh, Greg Bro. Best to keep Greg Bro in there since he's doing some good work. Okay, sorting everybody out. Okay, wow. Okay, so this is, this is our sort of situation here right now. It's not the most brilliantly organized base ever, but it's functional. Um, we'll, we'll assume that supplies are going to be a good... Okay, let's see. It should tell us somehow, right? 
that supplies whether they're gonna be good or not. It's producing it at point. It's only been a few minutes and it's at point oh eight. Looks like they need nineteen point four per day. Yeah, should be all right. Next, we're gonna have to do basically the same thing with the colonization one base. I don't even want to turn to them until we get the module there. But uh, yeah, uh, they need a scientist though. They need as many scientists as possible. The good thing is, with our Salalander system, we could send two over there, two scientists, or one scientist and one biologist, either way. And that'll be fine because um, it's not so long a trip to the moon as it is to Minmus, so the habitation will not be a problem. Okay, so here we are with uh, Macdo and Bob Kerman. Macdo is a biologist, Bob is a scientist. On this mission, we're not carrying fertilizer because it turns out that the lunar base, or lunar base, already has a lot of fertilizer. I don't know why their portraits aren't showing up. I'm pretty sure that on the last mission, the Kerbal's portrait showed up. So why why should there be any problem here? Hmm, curious. Anyway, uh, so I've put supplies in instead, uh, just because I didn't have any idea of what else to send. Well, I did have an idea of what else to send. I wanted to send material kits, but it turns out that these containers don't have enough space for nearly enough material kits to make a difference to inflate the one little module that we don't have inflated, which is uh, the HAB quarters module. Uh, that requires 8,000 to inflate, and the maximum number of material kits we can carry, I think, is just 1,800. So we would need like uh, five times as many. All right, so on that note, and we've got uh, seven days of HAB for these two. Plenty of supplies, obviously, because we're carrying extra. And I did put extra commu uh, two extra commutron, oops, 16s on, just for good measure, just in case. So here we go. Launch. Now remember, for the previous launch, all it really required was 720 liquid fuel and 880 oxidizer, basically. We'll reserve much more than that, uh, taking a look at the stage view, I think. Well, that's basically where we shut off last time, 800 meters per second, and as you can see, we're reserving 3,750 liquid fuel, so quite a lot more than is strictly required for landing, and that's the fuel that we would need to boost back with. But, uh, yeah, anyway, let's let it go. And, uh, whoop, well, hold on, let me get the... Pail of fairing separation separate. Okay. And ignition. And now pail of fairing separation. Hmm. Still no visual on them. Okay, let's hold off to lapoapsis. And as before, we have plenty of fuel. Okay, let me plot for the moon. Okay, here we are for lunar transfer. We do have a free return trajectory if we happen to hit the, the burn properly, but here we go. Okay, we have a periapsis. May need a higher periapsis than seven kilometers. 24 is pretty good, but let's give ourselves some leeway. 40, 40 is nice. 40 kilometer periapsis, free return trajectory. Uh, well, high periapsis on the Kerman side, but we will we'll be fine with that. All right, so we are on our way. Macdo and Bob still not visible, annoyingly enough. Hopefully they're still all right. But yeah, off we go. Hmm, it occurs to me at this point that I sort of neglected the fact that we've got polar base at the moon. And maybe it'd be better to fix that right now. So um, let's focus view on the moon. Looks like about 70 meters per second. And that's a good pass over the base. Should be able to make it happen. All right, node. Okay, now making orbit around the moon. 
Okay, we now have a decent low pass over the base, periapsis 5.5 kilometers. So we're going to continue to use this stage to help us slow down until it's expended. I don't think there's any problem with that. All right, let's continue. We do want this stage to crash over off to the side. It'll be going at a significant velocity, so we're not going to be able to land it to get material kits, though I seem to not know how to do that properly yet. Looks like this will crash four kilometers away from the base. That's good. Separation and ignition. And you're down. If we have any lights, no, we don't. Not really. Okay, and now we can land more precisely at the base. And it looks like we need to be a little bit further west. Now this is different from Minmus, we don't have that much extra thrust to work with here. So we have to be careful. That suicide burn countdown's gonna go down real quick. Well, the other stage is destroyed, clearly. Okay, we better just sit down here. It seems like we'll need to do a little bit of hopping closer to that side if we want to hook up. So... Is that close enough? Well, let's do a little bit more. That should be good enough to hook things up. Okay, so, um, the thing is I would really like to just remove this lander from the whole equation, but it's still got a lot of stuff in it. So that's why we can't uh, do that just yet. So this is the main base, and if we take a look at in here, it's got a lot of fertilizer mainly. I've emptied the rest of it, except for a little bit of mulch, which of course the kerbals generate, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, so about 10 mulch uh, in two canisters and then 300 fertilizer is what we've got extra there. Taking a look at the base, um, Georgie, Samrina, I hope one of them has a drill. That's sort of important. Let's see. No, Georgie doesn't. Well, how about Bill? Can't exit. Module does not have a hatch. Okay, where is Bill? No crew there. Bill's there. But if he moved into one of the inflatable uh, modules, chances are he doesn't have a drill. Do we have like a container unit somewhere? that has drills in. Okay, there's plenty of drills in this thing. Alright, let's have Bill, EVA, get the drill, hook things up. Uh oh. Oh no! Bill's glitched. I think. Hold on. Uh oh. Yeah, I I can't move Bill. Oh no. Wow, that's a pretty valuable surface sample. Okay, keep that. But 
No, definitely don't don't toggle that. Um, maybe if we switch vehicles. I've tried, of course, activating a CVA. I don't know. This is sort of a precarious situation. This was not the best arrangement here. Hmm. If we retract it, then we will need more material kits to extend it again. And the whole point was to get the agroponics going. Yeah, don't, don't remove helmet. Okay, let me go back to Space Center and come back. Oh, he, he's a little bit more mobile. Ah, ah, I got him, got him. Whew, all right. Wow, that was really bad for a sec there. I don't mind the fall at all at this point. All right. Good times. Can you cross this without bumping into it? Good. Now, if uh, we can figure out how... I mean, we've got nuclear engines on that, though. We don't want to turn it into material kits. We want to launch that back up again, is the idea. And then refuel it instead of having to launch new vessels all the time. Okay, where's that? Okay. Need to figure out how this whole logistics system is supposed to work. Of course, I'm using these little ports because that's what I'm most familiar with from like my previous colonization series kind of thing. Just uh, right there. Certainly does not. Well, I just I wanted to link it to the power plant, but I guess we'll link it directly to the base, even though that's dodgier. I mean, I should know better because in that previous colonization series, our bases went all buggy thanks to this sort of thing. Okay, can we get to that thing without glitching? Grab. Board. Alright. Now we must transfer stuff and peoples. So, uh, MACDO, well, let's see, right click, transfer crew, transfer to there. Okay, biologist, where biologist should be. Where is our Bob? Transfer crew, Bob to the other one. And now, machinery. Start agroponics. Well, let's wait until all the machinery's in. Maybe it'd be more efficient to have both of them in one agroponics unit. Well, this says 54.41% load. That's pretty good. I mean, that mean, I mean, if we if adding another Kerbal into this unit means that I'll get to 100%, it'd still be more beneficial to have the other Kerbal over here. Okay, start agroponics, also 54% there. So that all seems pretty good. Um, it says 67 days worth of supplies here, but that certainly isn't calculating the agroponics. Um, looks like Georgie and Bob only and uh, Macdo only have one year of habitation. That would go up quite a lot if we could expand this habitation module. But again, we need eight thousand uh, material kits for that, which we do not have anything close to. We don't even have material kits in the complex here. But anyway, uh, mission successful. We have agroponics units up and working. I don't know if I should do the ground tether. I'm, I mean, half of me says that that will solve the problem that we saw in the previous series and make sure that everything is stable and won't uh, float up or anything. The other half makes me wonder whether that function will cause the problem. Uh, so, I mean, it looks all nice and stable. I'll always remember to zip up the save after every session. So, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that going. Alright, so on this note, with uh, both of our bases now with active agroponics units, 
I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.